your Tesla has some wild secret hidden features built in that I guarantee you do not know about. It can run full on Apple CarPlay. You can add secret customizations into the Tesla app and even access some hidden menus in your car that Tesla does not want you to know about. Don't tell them you heard this from me. In this video, I am spilling the beans, giving you all the secrets and breaking down the top 15 hidden features that you need to know about uh, that are secretly built in to the Tesla Model 3, Model Y, Model S, and Model X as well. If you're a new Tesla owner, watch this video because there are some amazing secrets in here you need to know about, so many cool features you can unlock on your car. And if you're a longtime Tesla owner, Watch this video too, because you're going to learn something, because I guarantee you do not know all of these 15 secret hidden features. And a big thanks to Drive Protected for sponsoring this video. Now, for those of you who haven't checked the service menu on your car in a while, there's actually a lot that Tesla has added recently. In fact, there's a lot they've added basically since I've last looked at this a couple of weeks ago. Um, if you didn't know, there's some, you know, there's a factor reset thing here. You can uh, calibrate uh, your driver's seat, steering wheel and mirrors. That's a great way to sort of fix some seat issues. I haven't seen auto adjust headlights. That's a new thing you can do now. There's the tow mode. Uh, you can calibrate your cameras here. There's a the car wash mode. There's even, this is new. I haven't really seen this before. There's a camera pre preview that'll actually show you what your interior cabin camera sees. So if I can get a shot of it, yeah, it might be kind of hard to see, right? Oh, I'm going to go a little further up. There's the camera. And then there's this, and you can kind of see the frame rate's actually pretty good. Um, and if you didn't know that, you know, if you didn't know that camera is there, uh, but it's kind of cool that it actually will show you a preview of that. Why? I am not really sure. Obviously, Tesla is continuing to use this camera more, and there's probably going to be more use for this. I mean, you can kind of see, you know, just how good of a, a view it has. Uh, but the service menu is actually pretty full featured. So if you didn't know, you can come in here, um, you can see your tire PSI, you could see warning modes, the car wash mode. There's also the wheel and tire configuration, which is useful, but if you want to swap um, from uh, different season tires, you can tell the car that so it knows to adjust range. Also, if you maybe go from to, uh, you want to downgrade from your induction to Gemini wheels, or you want to go up to the Uber turbine wheels, that's obviously going to affect your range. And the only way the car is going to know that is if you actually come in here and tell it that. So if you do swap wheels, you go to winter from tire or winter from tire, you go from winter from summer tires or whatever that is. I'm... I'm sorry, I'm in Southern California, so I don't have that. Um, but if you do change wheels, you can do that. Uh, do know that that does exist in the service menu. There's a lot that Tesla's added in here recently, and there's a lot that you can do in this service menu, but that is not all. There's another little hidden menu here that Tesla does not want you to know about. And let me just say, I'm going to show this for educational purposes only. I'm not liable for any changes you make in this, but educational purposes here. If you tap on where it says Model Y or Model 3 or whatever your car is, just tap and hold on that, you're going to be entered, uh, prompted to enter an access code. If you type in service, this is going to put your car into service mode. It's going to hey say, hey, you're going to put it into service mode. Do not enable it unless you know what you're doing, this and that. If you hit enable, this is now going to give you a whole lot of different uh, menus and features and a whole lot here that you didn't know you had access to. And also, it'll actually show you down here that your car is now with that wrench icon. You are now in service mode. And now you have access to a lot of different things. You can see the type of processor you have. You can see uh, the firmware your car is on. You can do a software reinstall. You can check touchscreen settings or service settings, service alerts. I can see here alerts on my car. Uh, I can see tire rotation recommended, all this stuff. It's really cool to come in here and see all this stuff. But again, don't mess around unless uh, you absolutely know what you're doing. So I can come back here. I can go back to the service mode here and I can go to driver assist. I can see things on cameras and sensors. I can check out things uh, all around. It is pretty cool uh, to look at this. Again, uh, be warned that you might, uh, you know, you run the risk of messing up some settings in here. But if you do want to really do a deep dive into your car and see what's going on and how's charging going and how's my AC system and this and that, you really can come in here and see a lot of really interesting things. Again, you got to be careful because if you do something and mess something up, you could, you know, run the risk of screwing up your car. Uh, but it is cool if you really want to come in here and diagnose a problem or uh, just, you know, maybe educationally tinker and do things. And again, if you want to safely exit it, just hit exit service menu and hold exit and that's going to back you out. So if you're interested, that is the secret service menu, said menu, pretty cool. But again, um, you've been warned, don't start messing with things unless you know what you're doing. 
So one of the changes Tesla recently implemented with the holiday update was their new mini player. Like instead of having the media go all the way across the bottom, it's now in this little left hand corner close to the driver, which is nice, but it can be a little confusing, especially when this happens. So let's say you have the media totally gone. You've got a nice clear shot here of your map. And for one reason or another, this goes away. You can either manually take it away or it goes away. You might be wondering what happened? How do I get it back? Because even if I go here, it's not going to bring back those controls. If you didn't know, there's a new icon in the bottom and it's that gray little uh, two squares with the music note. If you tap on that, that is going to give you uh, the media control back. Not even that, there are actually more controls here that you have and excuse the air here obviously as you can see the air doesn't play nicely with other uh, parts of this so you do have expanded media controls here you can see your recents you can do shuffle you can do loop you can adjust your eq and even search which is kind of cool you can do all that right there and the other thing built in here which is cool another little bonus hidden feature here is cars that i can actually swipe left and right and see different things i can see uh, some efficiency things my odometer current drive all that stuff i can go here and see the tire pressure and I think those are the only three cards that are here. So again, I can get rid of this completely if I want to, bring it back just like that. And again, I have some info cards here if I'd like more info. Obviously, I can't go up here, but I do get some info that I can bring this all the way up if I want even more control. So that's the little media card, and that is how it works and how to get it back if it mysteriously disappears. Okay, now before we continue with more of these really awesome Tesla secrets, I've got an extra one here, a bonus tip that you absolutely need to know, maybe one of the most important tips on this list, and that is that you can protect your Tesla and keep that very precious and fragile paint in pristine condition with high quality PPF super simply and super easily, and also more importantly, you can do it yourself really easily for a fraction of the cost. That's right, this is a really big deal and is all made possible by this video sponsor, Drive Protected. Now, if you haven't heard of Drive Protected before, I have the honor of introducing you to the number one source for DIY paint protection film. The team is not only here to help you protect the most important part of your Tesla, but they're also here to walk you through the entire process step by step with some really excellent visual demos through video so you can do everything super easily, even if you're a beginner like me. And personally, one of the things that I love most about Drive Protected is that they've got a number of excellent options to fit your Tesla's protection plan. If you want to do the whole car, Drive Drive Protected has got you covered in that area, but also if you just want to do the hood or the headlights, maybe the bumper, Drive Protected has got you covered, and they offer expertly crafted pre-cut kits that you can install right on your own, at your own home. Their Defense Plus PPF is completely transparent and designed with incredibly intelligent technology to provide a professional and sleek finish, and also, again, protect that very fragile paint on your Tesla from dings, nicks, scratches, and stuff like this. Yes, this is on my personal Model Y, and I really wish I had installed PPF way sooner on my car. And I can 100% tell you from like my own personal experience that Drive Protected really gives you all the tools, support, and knowledge you need to make the install go as simple and as easy as possible. I, for one, like I said, I'm a total novice to this. I've never installed anything bigger than like a skin on my phone, but thanks to the awesome Drive Protected team and all of the resources they provide, I was able to follow the instructions step-by-step step, and just recently installed their Defense Plus PPF on the hood of my Model Y in a couple of simple steps. And also, if you're beginner like me, you're going to love the Drive Protected offers a PPF install kit that gives you everything you need for your install. So now is the perfect time to protect your Tesla with super high quality, easy to install PPF for my friends over at Drive Protected. And also use my special coupon code at checkout, Rosenfeld, to get 20% off your order. Again, that coupon code is Rosenfeld. Enter that at checkout to get 20% off your order. Again, a huge thanks to Drive Protected for being an awesome partner on this channel and learn more about them today at the link right down below in the description. All right, next, let's jump into the Tesla mobile app on iOS or Android because there are a couple of really cool hidden features built into this that I guarantee you didn't know. So first things first, one of the cool things now is that you can view the interior cabin camera when you are not in the car, whether your dog is in there chilling on dog mode or you want to make sure nothing happens uh, to your car if you're sort of out and about and uh, you just want to make sure your car is safe and sound. If you jump into either the security and driver setting there or just go to live camera, 
cameras and get a live feed here of all the different cameras around the car. I've obviously got the front, the back, the left, and the right, but also there's a new option here for the inside of the car. I can tap sort of in the middle there, and that is a pretty clear view of the interior of my Model 3. And also what's even more impressive about this is that the car is currently sitting in like a pitch black garage, which is pretty, you can see here, it's like pretty dark from all the other angles, but the interior cabin camera does a really good job. So you can see this live, you can see also the temperature as well if you're concerned about anything going on, if you got pets in there, um, that is a really cool feature and uh, you can do it right inside of the Tesla app. One of the other cool features as well is in the upgrades tab. So I'm gonna scroll down here to upgrades and there's a couple of cool things here you should know. One is that if you didn't know, you can obviously go through the Tesla shop and check out accessories here. Tesla's got a lot of cool accessories. They've got floor mats, they've got Got apparel, they've got paint correction stuff, which I actually need to do on my Model Y. Lots of cool stuff they've got in here, but also there are software updates you can do with your car. So for example, there's Enhanced Autopilot, which gives you a lot of the full self-driving features for more than half the price, 6,000 bucks. You could obviously spend $15,000 on your credit card right now and buy full self-driving, or my favorite here is that you can subscribe to full self-driving for 15,000, 15,000, whoa, 199 a month instead of paying $15,000 if you wanted to subscribe and cancel. One of the other interesting things here as well that a lot of people don't know is that if you're paying for premium connectivity, which is Tesla's data plan, you can either pay $10 a month, which is $120 a year, or $99 a year if you want to pay for the year up front. But you go into manage and you go to, I have active right here, I have um, the premium connectivity. If I tap on that, I have the option right there to switch to an annual plan, which is probably something I should do and save myself 20 bucks since this is something I use all the time. And I could also cancel the subscription right there if I want to. The other thing I wanna show you here real quick as well is that if I jump to my Model Y, which is low on battery, so it'll take a second to sort of get going here, is that Tesla also offers an exclusive uh, upgrade for long range models. The long range Model 3 and long range Model Y can get what's called an acceleration boost that'll give you a little bit more performance out of the motors in your car, give you a faster zero to 60 speed and basically give you a faster car. So same here as well, if I go to upgrades on the long range model, go to software updates, I can buy an acceleration boost for $2,000 that simply improves my zero to 60 time from 4.8 down to 4.2. So if you have a long range model, make sure you know about the acceleration boost. Some people love it. And then one last thing I want to show here is that there is an easy way to get five different commands into your app. See here, I have five. The stock here is actually just four. So if I remove this, your app might probably, probably looks like this if I can speak. You've only got four, but there's an easy way to add five. What you want to do is tap and hold here on the icons and bring it up. And you got to sort of be uh, particular with your finger here, but you want to drag one of these icons here, any of them, to the very far corner on the left or right to add a fifth icon. So for example, if I wanted to add um, the um, AC off, uh, fan off uh, little uh, icon here, I got to tap on it and then drag it all the way to the right. It's really tough to do sometimes. See, I'm not getting it right now. I'm going to start again bring it all the way, I lost it. See, sometimes you replace it. It's a little trial and error here, but drag the icon all the way to the right. See, still not getting it. Third time's a charm. There it is. See right there at the very edge, let go. And then now you have five. It's sort of hard to see. It takes a little bit of practice, but you want to drag that icon all the way to the right or left. I think the left works as well. All the way to the, uh, to the edge there and snap it there. Then you can get five icons. And if you want uh, four instead of, uh, or five rather instead of four icons, you can dare do it there right on your Tesla. I am not fumbling over my words. So I'm going to stop talking. There's a couple of little secrets built into the Tesla app that I probably bet, guarantee, bet, Hopefully you didn't know. One of my favorite Tesla features these days is the automatic blind spot cameras that when I go left or right, I automatically have a preview there of the corresponding camera. So that's left, this is right. Love this feature, it is really cool to see. And if you didn't know, there's a couple of cool things you can do with it. For one, to turn it on, it's not on by default. Go into the car icon here. You wanna go under autopilot of all settings and then turn on automatic blind spot cameras. Now you can go left or right here and you can see the corresponding camera. But not just that, you can actually move this feed as well. So you have three positions here. You have a top feed, you have a middle feed and you have a bottom feed. If you tap and hold on this, you can see you can move it. So you see these sort of gray areas on the screen? That's where you can move the camera. So if I want to have it down here, I can do it there. Not super useful there. Maybe a little bit more useful there. 
But in my opinion here, it's right there is going to be the most useful. And then uh, once you have that there, it's just going to stay like that. Really nice little feature here. One of those uh, things that Tesla added thanks to community feedback. Um, but if you didn't know, turn on automatic blind spot cameras. And also, you can now move that around the screen as well in those three different positions. Next, let's talk dash cam. Having a built-in dash cam inside your Tesla is one of the coolest features in my opinion. It's really awesome, but you might not know how to actually save a clip. The dash cam is always recording, but let's say you get in an accident or something happens, you hit something in the road and you wanna save that clip. How do you do it? Well, there are a couple of ways to do it. The first I'd recommend is turning on something called honk to capture. Basically, when you honk the horn, it is going, hey, there's a Rivian. There you go. It's going to automatically, um, Save that in your sentry mode or your dash cam folder. And to turn that on, I think it's under, do, 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 I gotta find it. Uh, honk to capture right there. If I can find it there, right there on honk. So if you turn on that button on honk, that's going to automatically save the clip when you happen to uh, honk the horn. As well as, let me show you how to do it while you're driving. So there used to be a really nice button I'm showing on screen here that Tessa used to have right in the corner that you could always press and access and save a clip which is really great they have since removed that which is kind of sad and you might not know how to access it what you actually have to do is you have to keep the sentry mode icon or the dash cam icon in your dock so i'm going to drag this down into my dock here and save it there. And this actually is a multi-purpose button depending on the state. So right now my car is in park. If my car is in park and I tap on this dash cam button, it's going to bring up the viewer. So this is going to let me see the clips I've saved. It's going to show me uh, sentry mode events, dash cam, all that stuff. It's a little slow to, to load here, but as you can see, it's going to do it so I can see what is going on. But this same button will actually save an event if you're in park. So if I step on my uh, brake here and I put the car in park or drive, I should say, sorry, if I'm in drive and I tap on that you can see now the icon turns red if i tap on this that's now going to save the clip that's going to save the dash cam clip it could do the same thing if i honk the horn but if you don't want to honk the horn you just want to tap on that you want to tap on the dash cam icon and do that when you're in drive then when you go back to park this now switches to a see you know what happens sometimes weird is uh i lose that uh thing i think that has to do with the profiles I think it's because I go to easy entry. Anyways, if I tap on this, now I've got the viewer. And um, now you can sort of see the clip you saved. Obviously, this is going to depend on, I think it's the profiles here. So I think when you go into easy entry, it's going to change these things, which I think is really dumb. That's sort of a side topic, how Tesla treats profiles. But anyways, that is your little tip there for the dash cam viewer. It is a viewer while in park and uh, you can tap on it and save a clip if you're in drive. One of the other awesome hidden features that I guarantee many of you are going to be really excited about is that your Tesla, while not officially supported by Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, can actually basically function with full-on CarPlay or Android Auto wirelessly to your car through the browser. I'm showing you B-roll on screen. I did a video on this not so long ago, but not only can you make this happen on your car, like full-on CarPlay, all the apps, all the audio working, Waze, all that stuff is there, but you can do it with a plug-and-play solution. You can do this DIY if you want to tinker with Raspberry Pis and stuff, but there's also this box called the uh, Carlin Kit, uh, I think it's like the TC1, say somewhere I don't know what it's called, T2C. Um, it's the Tesla to CarPlay box. And this is literally a plug and play box where you plug it into your car uh, for USB power. It starts up, you connect to it via Wi-Fi. Then this has all the brains in it to basically ha allow you to send wireless car CarPlay from your phone to the box and then to the browser in your car. I'm gonna leave linked the video up here and down below to sort of walk you through how this works. It's really, really simple. Does not require a SIM card, by the way. I saw a lot of comments on this. Does not require a SIM card. You can use your phone's hotspot to do this. Uh, but this is the simplest plug and play solution that I've tried to have in my Model Y when I wanna use CarPlay. And it's literally a box that you can use to get CarPlay, or even now they have wireless Android Auto right on your Tesla. I will leave a link down below to this box. And also, I think if you use like my special coupon code on screen, you can save 20%, I think. I'm going to put all the details on screen down below. Not a sponsor of this video at all. Uh, I've done the previous coverage on this before. But if you're looking for like a plug and play solution for CarPlay Android Auto, check out the T2C box. Uh, it's legit. I've got two of them here and I've tested them. They work and uh, is a great plug and play solution for CarPlay or Android Auto in your Tesla.
All right, next, let's talk about this little app icon drawer down here. Not exactly sure what Tesla's calling this, but I've seen some questions on what these icons are, and I'll sort of show you that, but let me explain first how this is laid out. So you've got your main sort of car controls here, you've got your AC system, then you have your apps, then you have recent apps. So these right here, these three will change based off of the recent apps you use in your car. So if I go in here and I jump into title, you're going to see title come down here and replace that. These are recent apps. It's not abundantly clear what these are. You won't know until you go in to customize it. And to customize these, if you didn't know, if you tap and hold on here, this is going to bring you to uh, the option of uh, basically dragging and dropping different icons down here. Not just that, but also Tesla recently added in a couple of updates um, a few months ago, uh, some climate control favorites here as well. So I've got my seat heater here. I've also got it for the uh, passenger if someone was sitting here, but since there's no weight on this, it's not going to show up. I've got my option here if I can go back here. Uh, for the front uh, defrost, rear defrost, uh, ST heat steering wheel and wipers. And uh, I can drag these down if I'd like to use them right like that. I can drag down, you know, apps like you've seen before. And then if you want to get rid of them, just tap that X as you'd assume. Or if you're like me and you miss, do it again. And that'll do it. And again, it does label it here, my apps. It shows recent apps. But uh, if you didn't know, that's how it's laid out. And that's how you can customize the app icons down there in the bottom of your screen. All right, this next step here is an oldie but a goodie because every time I show it off, uh, people are amazed by this. And I think it's existed for years. Ever since I got my car back in 2019, my first Tesla, uh, this existed and people are always blown away by this. It's really cool. And that is the ability to wirelessly send addresses to your car, then have it automatically put that in the navigation. So basically, for example, if I'm here in Google Maps, I'm scrolling around and say, hey, you know what? I really feel like going to, uh, oh, actually, this is a good place. Claro's Italian Market. It's in Tustin, California, if you know where that is. Great Italian Market. I really want to go there. Let's go there right now. It's 20 minutes away. What I can do here is instead of doing directions on my phone or like putting it into the Tesla and searching for it that way, what I can do is I can go to the share icon here, either on iOS or Android, um, whatever your phone's share thing is, and then tap on the Tesla app icon. And then what that's going to do is send it directly to the car. So it's sent to my Model Y. So now when I go downstairs and get in the car, it's already put in the navigation. It's already ready to go. I just flip from park to drive and I start driving. It's automatically going to send it there. It is super simple, super easy. And this should work in any application that allows you to share an address to something else, to a text message or something else. Share it to the Tesla app and it'll automatically send that address to the Tesla, automatically put it in the GPS. So when you get in your car, you can go and not waste any time fumbling around with typing in or voice uh, chat or not voice chat, but you know, doing it with voice dictation. Just uh, share it from your phone. Super simple, super easy. It's a great way to go. Another really nice new feature that you might not know about is that you can now run the Tesla theater in a non full screen preview because in years past when you were to open up, let's say Tesla theater, for example, and you'd pop open a Netflix, you'd get there we go. Wow. We'll get the full sort of uh, experience here with the full screen Netflix UI. But what if you wanted to sort of check your charging speeds or do other things? You just, you want to watch Netflix, but you don't want it sort of all taking up the whole screen. You now actually can just pull down from the top here and get, well, that didn't work. Let's try that again. You now can press the full screen icon right there and be able to take this down to a non full screen mode. Obviously swiping from the top to the bottom will uh, take it getting music here. Wow, this is a lot of fun. Um, just turn that down. That'll close it. But what you can do now is you can come up here to the uh, top left and then now have that in a windowed mode. So you still have access to the car here. You can open up at the front of the trunk. You can check charging speeds uh, and so watch Netflix, but not have to have it in full screen. You can pop back to it if you want to right there. This works for everything in the Tesla theater as well. So YouTube will do the same thing. You want to watch YouTube, but you don't want to take it up the full screen. Tap that icon there. So it'll take you out of full screen and now you can enjoy YouTube um, and sort of have it side by side with other stuff going on. So now one of the new uh, additions here is a uh, non full screen Tesla theater uh, is a nice little uh, icon there. And uh, now you can tap it and have that control literally at your fingertips. Now, I showed you that, yes, your car does have an in-cabin camera right there. And one of the cool uses for that is zoom. You can actually zoom inside of your Tesla and take zoom calls and 
be all, you know, corporate and official. Uh, I've shown that off in a previous video, but something you might not know or something you might wonder is, well, where's my Zoom icon? If I come here to all my apps, I don't see Zoom, but on my wife's rear wheel drive Model 3, it's there. Well, the reason is your processor. If you have a Ryzen-based processor, that is a 2022 Tesla newer, then you have the Zoom app. If you're like me with the old Intel Atom processor, you're out of luck. Okay, now this is a really cool hidden feature that I bet a lot of you Model 3 and Model Y owners don't know about. It's actually a feature that Tesla brought that was exclusive to the Model S and Model X, and that is auto turn signals. Basically what it means is that when you change lanes, like if you go from one lane to the other or you're changing lanes on the highway, it is going to automatically turn off the signal when the lane change is completed. The car knows when you go from one lane to the other and it'll automatically turn it off. It's sort of hidden away in a weird submenu. It's actually, you think it's like under navigation or autopilot, it's under lights. If you go to lights, there's a new uh, little uh, option here for auto signals. And if you tap on that, it'll tell you that once you have made uh, the merge or the fork or lane change, it'll automatically turn it off. And it's really cool. Uh, all you have to do is just turn it on to auto cancel. And basically, like the name suggests, it's sort of pretty self-explanatory you make that change and it automatically turns off the signals it's one of those little things like it's not going to be life-changing but it's one of those little creature comfort things that is nice as you drive that the car will do for you so if you didn't know go under lights turn on auto turn signals to auto cancel really cool feature that the s and x had but now is here on the three and y2 all right so what are your favorite tesla hidden features for your new owners out there hopefully you learned something uh new and you enjoy this but for you longtime tesla owners you guys watching this video i know many of you out there have multiple teslas you've owned it for years what's your favorite hidden feature that you love and use on your car every single day let me know down below we can share our tesla knowledge tesla secrets together to everyone in the community we can all enjoy a little taste of tesla knowledge. As always, I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you so much. I'm Robert Rosenfeld, and I'll see you all in the next one.